Greetings and welcome back to Monster Legends. All right, it's Saturday, so let's talk about some stuff. The first thing I'd like to do is briefly talk about something that happened a couple of days ago, and then we're going to talk about all the events that are going on right now, kind of briefly. Then I want to do a section on the recent five cosmic mythics that were released in a section I will refer to as the have and have nots. All right, so let's just start with a little bit of the past here. So last Thursday, we had the El Colossal Breeding Event for Light. I was thinking about whether I wanted to do a video for that day or not. But, you know, the thing is, the good combinations came out later in the day, so it would have been too late by that point. I mean, if you weren't going to cover the combination for Worm Lad, what is even a purpose of doing a video, you know? Because... There weren't really many individuals that day that were worth talking about, right? Now, unfortunately, when Whirlab came out, the combination that is, it was one that I couldn't do. So I went to my second uh, option, which was Nikazia. So I got three of her. I already have her. And for those who don't know, she's very good. And she's one of the few who's actually useful. The other one, of course, is Rasyuku. And uh, I already have her as 115. As a matter of fact, she helped me get uh, uh, an upgrade for Elvira. I think it was Thursday. It was the same day. I happened to notice there were six, hour, six or seven hours left, so I just decided to make a go for it. I used Moonhaze, Wormlad, and Rasyuku, and basically they had no trouble at all. The only time I had a problem is that section towards the end when everybody's an artifact because that way you can't stun them, you can't put torture effects on them or anything. As a matter of fact, what's interesting is it's a group thing. So Wormlad wasn't getting the artifact boost, which was a little annoying because they were all going right for him, you know? In case you ha don't have Rasyuku, the reason, of course, I'm talking about that makes them useful, and I'm sure most of you know what I'm talking about. Uh, da -da -da, there we go. She dodges group attacks. That's the thing. That's the thing that makes the three that I mentioned useful. They dodge group attacks. In her case, she's actually kind of really good. Uh, she starts with this one here, which is like a blinding attack that gives her an extra turn, right? Then she can do this one, which is going to try to apply sunburn twice, which is good. This one here, which removes positive status effects, you know, and gives random negative effects. And this one here, which removes positive status effects to a single individual in total blind. So you turn her up, you put a whole bunch of like support speed on her. She's actually still useful. Just like Wormlad. Wormlad's useful. Rasyuku is also. See, the thing is, they dodge group attacks. So if you have a cosmic mythic who directly goes after them to kill them, well, that means they're not attacking maybe your cosmic mythic. So, yeah, I mean, that's still very useful. So that's the reason that I'm doing that. Everybody else that day, not useful, right? And if you want to finish books or something like that, that's terrific, but they're not going to be useful to you in the future. It's kind of the reason I didn't do a video. Both of them, I didn't see their combinations come out until it was like 5 in the afternoon or something like that, and by then it was way too late. So that's what's going on with that. And as I mentioned, I actually did upgrade Elvira. Uh, the reason for that is I noticed it in PvP, See, I have my He's in there now, and he's 130, and here, just to pop over here for a moment. So he's, oops, sorry, me. So he's in there right now because, of course, he's immune to control. So this combination has actually gotten him to do about 450,000 damage to another group. But I do notice that I will skip teams that have Alvira because it's just not worth it at that point. You know, it's too much effort. So um, that's the reason I figured, you know, maybe I should upgrade her, and I did. So she's got that wonderful group attack that does the uh, sunburn now. So that's in the past. All right, so what do we got going right now? Obviously, the big item we have going right now is we have a marathon. You can see we're not really doing too well. It's a little hard to get enthusiastic at this point, I think. Um, one reason, of course, is the individual here. This is Tabura. Uh, she's Earth Support, Trait Disable, not a lot else. Um, we'll, we'll talk in detail a little bit later here. Um, but anyway, she's actually the center of that. And uh, you know what's actually funny? The booby prize is actually useful. 
if you go all the way down to the bottom here and you look if your team only ends up getting eight laps and not getting the 10, you actually get Hyperia. Now, if you have a whole bunch of Earth cells or Elementium, you could rank him up and uh, basically have the, like a Megaton tank and he'll take a hit for your team. That's basically what legendary Megaton tanks are good for these days. Basically taking one hit for your team. Uh, but that could be the opportunity you need, you know? So that's not such a bad thing. And of course, in order to get to Bora, at least the, uh, the first version, your team would have to get to lap 10. And, uh, and if you get further laps, you'll get upgraded versions with extra stuff. But of course, how do you do that, right? Let's just step back for a second here. Uh, you complete these uh, quests over here on the right. You complete, you get three at a time. You actually have to complete all of them. You see, we're waiting for people to hatch eggs because that's so complex. It's so complex that I think it's been sitting there for a couple of hours. Yeah, but it's a Saturday afternoon and it's kind of nice outside. Um, and then you'll get a whole set of new ones. As you get those, it'll move you around the board. You can see at the moment, we're like a quarter of a lap away from getting to lap three. So maybe we'll get Hyperia, right? That's unfortunately ways this is starting to look. Um, but the thing is that, you know, if your team does very well, you know, you can get a very nice ranked up version. It's completely under your control, your team's control, right back over here. So if your team gets 65 laps, you're going to get a three star. If you go all the way at the top here, see the um, 200, if you get the lap 200, you're going to get a five star five rank ups and then i think you get like a chest with more in it hold on a minute what's in there hello never mind okay okay wait a minute wait a minute i guess it's avatars okay whatever it is and then of course if your team does good in your little collection of you know of 20 teams then you could also get the position rewards which is even more cells and by the way who, whichever team member does well in your team is going to get an extra 100. So even if our team doesn't actually get Tabora, whoever does the best, and currently that is Loretta, um, Loretta basically going to get 100 cells and they're going to get Tabora. So that's kind of the way that works. So someone is going to get it. Someone's going to get it. So that's the way that's going on. We're going to talk about Tabora when we talk about the the uh, the mythics the cosmic mythics right the have and have not section all right what else do we have going all right so they're running they're running this special thing uh, for one of the cosmic mythics right it's a special book it's going for another 13 days 13 hours and 26 minutes this is for Teddy VR right so they have all of these now I'm I actually have Ursus's um, egg, so I'm going to have to hatch him before this works out because these rewards are kind of no joke. The chests are kind of a joke. The um, the the rewards are not a joke. So you got 20 of the keys, which means that's four spots in the um, the little place you store your characters. I can't remember it at the top of my head. What is the name of it? The Fall. That was it. And then, of course, an extra 200 uh, Stardust, which you can do to rank up your Cosmic Mythics. Um, now, Teddy VR, the way you get Teddy VR, we'll talk about him in detail. Like, he has taken over for Heifs in terms of the uh, PvP. So you're going to get chests in your PvP, and you may very well might get pieces of him in there, especially if they're rank 4 or rank 5, you know, the tiers, I should say. As I understand, there's also specific chests for him, so you can end up getting a lot of him. Now, I don't think we're going to get anywhere near as much as we got for Heist. You know what's funny? I thought I held on to a couple of Tier 5 chests, you know, and I was going to open, I opened them up yesterday after Heist was gone and we had Teddy VR. The thing about it is it turns out that when you get the chest, it already has the reward in it. So when I opened the two chests yesterday, one of them had 80 cells and the other one had 200 cells of heist. So, I mean, they're pretty much useless to me now because I need 2,500 in order to get them up any higher. So I, was, I didn't really need any. I was kind of hoping they might be Teddy VR, but apparently that's determined at the time you get them. So hoarding them doesn't work. 
So that's something to keep in mind for the future. I actually tried that and it didn't work. But I do have about 50 cells for him right now because they're also doing this. Anytime now, guys. Anytime. All right, here we go. Uh, you can also get five cells of him from this. I thought it was ten. Okay, I guess I was wrong. Anyway, it's five. They're probably going to be running for that for a while, too. So if you complete your dailies, you'll also get five cells of him. But, like, the chests. The chests are the big thing, of course. All right, and, of course, there is also um, another one. Uh, there, let's just go up here for a moment. Because he's part of the... Where is it? Boom, boom, boom. He's part of the Legends Pass. Now, this one over here, we'll, we'll get around to him, right? Uh, Daigal, I believe his name is, something like that. Um, as I said, we're not going to talk in detail about two of the individuals, but we're definitely going to mention them. Now, I think the other guy is in here. So eventually, if you did this, you would end up getting him. Let me see, where is he here? Way on the end. Way, 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 way on the end. Way on the end. All the way at the end. There he is right there. All right, this is Atrox. Okay, it's having some loading issues. You know, the reason for that is because I just installed the new version, so it probably hasn't loaded everything. Uh, he kind of looks like a cross between the uh, Plague Doctor from Darkest Dungeon and one of the individuals from Spy vs. Spy, if you've ever seen the birds there. So, I mean, his artwork is okay. So I'm not going to say anything about his artwork. We'll talk about his content in a bit. So another way you can get him, though, is they're doing this really big, extended, crazy monster wood thing. Now, at the moment, they've told me, go away and come back later, because I've watched a kajillion videos, kajillion videos. And I believe I have 84 cells of him right now. So that's kind of cool. Um, I shouldn't have much trouble getting him long before then. And, of course, eventually I'll get 100 on the free side of the Legends Pass, so I'll be able to rank him up. I think that's about everything in terms of that. Now, in terms of what else was in that book, remember the book up there for Teddy VR? They're also doing a Choose Your Path. And I think I'm probably going to get a little splat screen. Yes, I am. All right, now these, you do your normal thing for maze coins, right? You're going to collect maze coins. You might notice that, well, one of these paths seems to be in use. And you can see over on the left, it's Scholar, right? So obviously, that's what I've been doing. See, there's a higher probability that I would get rid of these two guys than I would Scholar. So I actually went all the way down, and there he is right there. You can see he's, he's happy with his bone, you know? So if you want your own bugs you have your opportunity now. Because let's face it, he's probably more useful than these two guys because they're legendaries. But Sculler, someday he's going to take over the world. So, you know, you might want to be on his good side. You know, that's what I'm just saying about that. So you can do that. There's also uh, a breeding event for that as well. I think this is the one. Uh, yes, it is. Okay, it's again, it's kind of loading in the graphics here. So you can do this combination to get White Pandolf and Teddy Fear, and then Voitech and, and Dusty Fear, and Sculler or Punchy, and down here, uh, Ursus down here. So um, like I said, I have an egg of Ursus. I actually have an extra 160 cells too. I got them from the PvP chests uh, a month ago. So I mean, I can get him and rank him up. So I probably should end up doing that. It's just that I'm not going to do that during a race. You'll notice that I did this and I left one spot open so that I can do like the breedings and stuff like that that you have to do during a race. So uh, that's how you would actually do this book over here. Where is it? Uh, bum, bum, bum. This one here. In case you need spots filled, right? So Teddy VR is really the only one that I need, though I'm going to have to hatch my Ursus. So like I said, the rewards down there, they're not, this is just video chest, so take that with a grain of salt. The other two are definitely worth doing. As a matter of fact, uh, what was really good, and I wasn't taking into consideration, they did extend the cosmic season by one day, which was good for anybody who delayed slightly after getting the, uh, what's the name on the uh, path? Rotten on the, uh, the path. If anybody waited until later in the event, they were really out of luck because it just ran out. They did extend it by a day, though, so I was able to get the rewards for that. But this book back here, The Cosmic Era, all right, so go back one. 
I didn't realize this was here. So once I got Rotten, right, it said, oh, you got rewards. So I got this, the Stardust, right? And I got two, I got two golden. I clicked on that one. What I didn't realize, if you look at this, this is actually nine or ten. So I actually got a nine and a ten. They were stamina. I'm going to try to turn them into something else. So definitely going to consider ranking up these individuals. Got a lot of Stardust just so that I can get the next group of these, which is basically double the first group. So definitely worth ranking up just for that, right? Um, besides, Black Feather's not too bad, even though he has that absolutely terrible skill that does the possession total blind and gives the target an extra, extra turn. That's a horrible skill. It only really benefits the other team. Unless, of course, you have somebody with anticipation or they're immune to blind. Otherwise, it only benefits the other team. So don't take that skill. It's terrible, terrible skill. I mean, if you have a hardy, you're all set. Use it then, right? The books are definitely something to pay attention to. I think that's about all of the events that we have going. I think there's another breeding event, but it's not really that important. I thought I saw something in regards to that, but nothing really of any importance. All right, so here's the thing. Uh, this is the part where I start talking about uh, the cosmic mythics. So if you don't want to hear rant, uh, thanks for watching, because that's, this is where I'm about to go with this. All right, so we have five new cosmic mythics who have been recently added. One of which is the Golden Path, one of which is an independent purchase. You might notice he's actually on the top of the screen there on the, uh, the right. He's right up there. That's actually Solar Flare. His story is that apparently he's the brother of uh, Sunblast, right? Something like that. He is a, um, he's a fire tank, but you know the funny thing about him is he's got taunt in his trait, and um, he can also do Megaton, but you don't really need the Megaton. The reason I say that is he's got the best health of any of the um, Cosmic Mythics so far. He's also got the highest power. He also can give himself double damage, and he can give himself triple damage, even though it gives him, uh, it disables his trait, and it um, gives him vulnerability. But he can give himself triple damage. Add that to the power, and then he's got, like, group attacks that can give uh, torture effects, and he is a massive damage dealer. So you may not even want to do tank stuff with him. I mean, he's already going to intercept single target attacks because he's got the taunting thing going on. So he is amazing. So, yeah, very amazing. But, of course, I'm not going to show his stats or anything like that because I work for my viewers. I don't work for other companies, right? The other one we saw, where is he here now? This fellow over here. All right, this fellow here is an angel. So his first uh, trait is Celestial, which is extremely useful, right? Uh, I do believe that that prevents him from being stunned. There's a couple other things that go along with that, too. I don't think Possession. I don't think it blocks Possession. Um, he also has three group attacks that either do Daze or Torture Effects. Um, and he's got some other things going. He, in other words, he is also really good, Really good. Definitely worth getting if that's what you want to do. Uh, now, I'm going to talk in more detail about the rest. See, those two are very good. I consider the rest adequate. So that's what I mean by the have and have nots. Those two guys are going to make a huge difference in fights, especially if you, you know, rank them up really high. You know, especially the other guy, if you have the golden path, he's probably going to 130, right? I mean, you're going to go to that kind of effort, right? The other one, if you open your wallet really wide, you can get into 130, maybe 140 or something like that. So let's just talk about the other ones. And I want to start with Teddy VR. All right, first of all, I'd like to say... I always consider the artworks on these guys to be very good. There are very few exceptions where I don't consider them to be good. Obviously, he is uh, styled after uh, Freddy, right? You know, Freddy from uh, uh, Five Nights at Freddy's, you know, that kind of thing. So he looks pretty cool. You know, he looks pretty cool. Um, I have big problems, though, 
with his skills. I'm not going to go into the normal kind of detail I would go into uh, because there are three of them. I really want to talk about their skills, right? So we're just going to go down the line. Although his trait, he's hardened, he turns tough, and then he's got self-protection. See, here's the thing about Freddy. I always considered Freddy to be a team player. I always considered that Freddy, you know, considered his fellow animatrons to be his family. Try to keep that in mind for a minute. So let's just talk about attacks, right? All right, so basic attacks, he gets a, a moderate earth hit, 40 damage, zero cooldown. That's kind of standard for a lot of them, right? Although for some reason, one of these individuals has absolutely horrible basic attacks. And then he gets a 50% life shield for himself, right? Um, yeah, there's a lot of that going around. All right, down to tier one, he gets a uh, moderate earth group attack that does daze. That's not bad. 35 damage and uh, one round cooldown. I don't have a problem with that. By the way, keep in mind, this guy is defined as an attacker. That's what he is. All right, then he gets a blocks 50% damage received and heals by 30% for himself. All right, going down to tier two, he gets a heal self by 50% and removes negative status effects for himself. Then he gets probably his best skill, which is blocks out 50% of damage received for allies and applies a 30% life shield to allies. So that's, that's good. A matter of fact, you absolutely require that one by the way. So that's why I'm like, is this an attacker or is he support? Let's move on. All right, then he gets a pretty good attack. You're probably just going to grab the bottom ones, I would guess. But, I mean, again, this guy is supposed to be an attacker. All right, so he gets a deals heavy uh, earth damage to one enemy and then gives himself another 30% life shield. He has like three skills that gives just him a life shield. I mean, he's not taunting or anything like that, so I don't know what's going on with that. But that's a good one. Uh, it does compare with something that Solar Flare gets, which is the same damage. It gives a torture effect. And it has no cooldown, whereas this one has a two-round cooldown. Just a little have and have not comparison there. But that's still that's still a good skill. Then he gets this last one, Bullet Rain. Deals heavy earth damage to all enemies and all allies. So it is heavy damage too. This isn't like Josh Dub where they say it's heavy damage, but it's not heavy damage. It is 45. It's got a three-round cooldown. You can only use it once every four rounds. The thing about it is, if you get this guy to high rank and you put a lot of damage on him, he might just kill his whole party at the same time he's killing the other side. So you need to go back to Tier 2 and use the blocks 50% damage to all allies and then gives them a 30% life shield. You need to buff your team before you can do the attack. But you know, this means you can't put this guy on defense or in war because you know it's going to reach for the big attack and it may just kill your own guys. I mean, look at it this way. What happens if the other team has actually got shields on it, yours doesn't, and he kills his own team and the other team is still barely alive? They won. So, I mean, this I do not understand why they did this. First of all, it doesn't even suit the character. It's the reason I brought up Freddy. Freddy considers his fellow animatrons, his team, to be his family. Why would he be killing them? I, I don't get that one. And I think this is a huge step down from Heist. I think that they made Heist too strong, and they're trying to pull back on the uh, available ones, the non-monetized ones. I think they're trying to pull back on those. Um, because Heist is just ridiculous, especially if you get into rank 3 like I did, and then he is immune to control. He's just a destroyer for me. You know, I just, I said, when I'm going through PvP teams, the only teams I avoid now are ones that have Elvira, you know, because that way the other team's going to actually go first, and that can be disastrous, considering I have two legendaries, right? But, um, yeah, I mean, that's just, yeah, you know what, let's just move on. We'll move on. All right, so now let's talk about Tabora. Tabora, of course, is the center of the marathon, right? So this is the one you're trying to get to get the marathon going here, right? All right, now, she's actually support. I think she's earth support. 
Oh, no, she's got darkness and earth. I'm guessing that she's darkness because she seems to do dark things here. But she's clearly support. Now, she leans very heavily onto one thing, right? And it, it's, it's like, okay, she's adequate, but is this someone you're dying to put in your team? That's what I'm talking about. All right, so let's just talk very briefly about her. Um, she's actually very fast, so I'm going to mention that in terms of her stats. Her life is very low. Her power is kind of low. Her speed is like tied with the best. So she's very fast. All right, and she also starts immune to stun, and then she gets hardened, and then she can get true vision. So being immune to stun means that, you know, let's face it, the next guy is not going to be able to do anything against her. Uh, a lot of them use stuns, just not going to affect her. All right, let's just move down to the skills and talk about them one by one. All right, so basic skills, uh, deals heavy earth damage to one enemy, applies quicksands. That's actually better than the attacker we just talked about because he did 40 damage, and this one does quicksand. This one does more damage, it's heavy damage, and it does quicksand. So it's actually better than the attacker we were just talking about. Uh, the next is a group low special damage. We're not gonna talk about that. All right, we're getting into tier one. Applies quicksands and major damage reduction to all enemies. Okay, for, in terms of support, that's not bad. You know, not bad. All right, uh, let's, the next one is deals moderate dark damage to all enemies, applies curse to all enemies. Okay, that one's, that's not bad. Those two, those two are kind of okay. All right, and the next one is what I consider to be a complete waste of a spot. Uh, applies trait protection and positive effect protection to one ally. Why would you waste a spot on that? If it was the entire group, I could get that. But why would you waste a spot on that? I wouldn't do that. Nope. I mean, if Tabora could put some super mega protection thing on somebody, you know, and then do that, then that might be it. But I mean, the thing is, if it was for the whole group, I can understand. All right. And then we have removes all negative status effects from all allies, applies torture immunity to all allies. I mean, I guess, you know, it's support. It's support. And then we're getting down to the meat of what the character is, right? All right, the first one, of course, is tier three we're talking about. Disables trait and applies curse and quicksands to one enemy. All right, so trait disabling, that's her big thing. She's going to do trait disabling and she's going to put torture effects on. So if somebody, like, is immune to um, torture, kind of like the next guy, by the way, if you rank him up, then it's going to disable it and put curse and quicksands on him, right? So, I mean, that could end up being very good. Then we have the final one, removes positive status effects from all enemies, disables traits on all enemies. All right, I mean, that's useful, unless, of course, the individual has to be dodging group attacks, which means you probably use the other one. So, I mean, you look at it, and that's like I said, it's adequate. Is there something here that's going to make you go, wow, I can't wait to use that. This, this one's going to make my team come to life. And not really. In my opinion, it is just my opinion, though. But, I mean, I'm looking at it, I'm like, okay, that's, like, adequate. It's definitely not the other two guys who are very good. All right, and um, let's talk about the last guy. By the way, I just noticed a sidebar. Sorry about that. I have two screens, and I move the, uh, the cursor over to the other one. Uh, basically, because I am reading the the stats off of that screen, and I'm going to end up superimposing it over the big screen. So, sorry about that. I didn't realize the cursor was on the other screen. All right, so let's talk about this guy. This is Atrox, right? And uh, basically, he's got a really terrible life. His power is pretty much like the one we just saw a moment ago. Uh, he's not as fast, too. The difference, of course, is he is actually a controller, and he is depending heavily on stunning. Uh, he also, in his trait, has the very, very useful uh, torture immunity right at rank zero. So his life, his low life, isn't really a problem. He's tied for, like, the lowest life. It's not really a problem because torture effects won't work on him unless, of course, you disable his trait. So maybe the two of them are supposed to oppose each other. Uh, basically, she, Tabora disables his trait to poison him, and uh, she is also immune to stun, so he can't stun her, right? So, in other words, this guy would be very useless against Tabora. Maybe that's the reason she exists. All right, so why don't we just talk about his skills? 
Um, here's the thing. I mean, he's kind of, he's, he's the same thing. He's adequate. He does the job. He's just got a lot of stuff thrown in here that's like, why do you want this? Now, his basic attacks are head scratching. What is going on with this? Because for a lot of the mythics and cosmic mythics, their basic attacks sometimes are very good. Maybe you even want to hold on to them. These are just terrible. Let's start with the first one. Applies stun to one enemy, removes all tortures from that enemy. Why would you do that? I mean, if they don't have any torture effects, okay, you're stunning him. Terrific. He's got a lot of stuns, though. So I don't know why you would ever want this one. See, there's actually a stun, if you go down, that does a little bit of damage. It does a stun, and it's got a one-round cooldown. Mind you, there's no cost for that one. Maybe that's the reason, right? You can use that uh, once every three turns, and it has no cost. But, I mean, what if they have torture effects on them? You wouldn't want to remove the torture effects. That's what's probably killing them, right? All right, and the next one. Applies a random torture to all allies. Applies a random torture to all enemies. What if they get nightmares and you get curse? Because this guy actually can't make your team immune to torture effects. He can remove them. That's kind of his thing. But it's not like he's going to prevent you from getting them in the first place. So I don't understand these first two. They're terrible. All right, moving down to rank one. Removes all tortures from one ally. Uh, no. Moving down. Uh, deals low magic damage to one enemy, applies stun to one enemy. All right, so he's got two single target stuns. Both of them have positives and negatives going for them. This one throws a little bit of damage. It's just a regular stun, but it is a one-round cooldown. So we're going to compare that with the one that's coming up. Moving down to Tier 2, we have deals moderate magic damage to one enemy, removes all tortures from all allies. All right, so you'd use that one instead of the one in Tier 1, right? I mean, that's okay, but I mean, it's not like he gives regeneration or heals. He's a doctor who doesn't actually heal anybody. You know, you could throw something else in there. For, somewhere in the character, there could be healing or regeneration, but there really isn't. But to be fair, he's a controller, right? That's what he does. All right, and then we get down to the other stun. Applies stun twice to one enemy. Now, obviously, the benefit of that is you're doing it twice. There's a better chance of actually landing it. It does have a two-round cooldown, though, and it doesn't do any damage. So, I mean, if everybody on their side is immune to stun, this is completely useless. So, I mean, you have to make a decision between those two, I think, because you're not going to take three skills that stun. That just doesn't make any sense considering the uh, immunity period. Just, just me. All right, and then we get down to the bottom ones. The bottom ones are actually pretty good. You're going to probably keep them, right? All right, the first one is deals moderate magic damage to one enemy, applies a random torture effect to one enemy. All right, that's, that's not bad. One round cooldown. So that one is pretty good. It's going to give a random torture, does damage. So the last one, of course, is his big one. Deals low magic damage to all enemies, applies stun twice. It's got a three round cooldown. You can only use it once every four turns. But still, it's a double stun. As long as they're not immune to stun, it has a really good chance of getting through resistance and stunning them. So, I mean, he's adequate, right? You get that one, you're going to take the double stun, right? You're going to take the one right above it, the moderate magic hit that gives the random torture. You know, that's, you know, you can take that one. Then you have to decide which of the um, stuns you want. You know, which of those stuns do you actually want? The double stun that doesn't do damage with the higher cooldown or the one with the low magic damage, the single stun with a one round cooldown so you can use it more often. Then I would probably take the other one in tier two, which is the moderate magic damage that removes all tortures. If nothing else, it's an extra hit. The other ones just are garbage. So it's like I said, I mean, he's adequate. He's probably the best of the three in terms of he does do the double stuns and he's fairly fast. You put a lot of stuff on him. And also the torture immunity is actually useful. So like I said, of the three of them, he's probably the best. So I think you got a good idea of the way I stand on those. Those are adequate. They're adequate. They're nothing shiny. As I said, Atrox is probably the most useful. He's magic and he does stunning, double stunning. So he's kind of useful. Do you really desperately want the other two in your groups? You know? 
I mean, if you controlled him, Teddy VR could be useful. It's just you can't let the AI do it. Otherwise, he'll kill your own guys if he's really strong, you know? If you get him up to, like, rank three and you put tens on him, he just might wipe out your whole group if he goes first, you know? So that's what I'm talking about. Unless, of course, you have Elvira and he somehow goes first, in which case that's probably going to work out. So, I mean, you just couldn't throw him in there in terms of defense or uh, on a war defense, you know, something like that. You'd have to actually control him. Uh, Tabora, I mean, she could situationally be useful, but, I mean, is, as again, is it someone you're dying to get into your team, you know? Anyway, I think that's what, uh, that's all I wanted to talk about today. I wanted to just kind of vent for a while. It's probably what these videos are going to be for me for a while for Monster Legends. Anyway, I think that's going to be it for now. So thank you very much for your attention. I really appreciate it. And play games because games are fun. See ya.